Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Queen's Club uh, for the 2023 Sir John Riplatt British Open. Uh, you've got Giles Doy and Dan Warboys again behind the microphone for this second quarterfinal match uh, of the day. Uh, and we're in for an absolute treat here uh, this afternoon. We've got uh, Nick Howell and Rob Shankman uh, both warming up at the moment, getting themselves nice and ready for uh, for this quarter final. Uh, so we'll start having a, a little look at the players. So Rob Shankman is the only uh, is the only unseeded uh, player who made it through to the quarter finals. Uh, this is his first quarter-final um, at the British Open. Uh, it's very, very excited, very keen to uh, finish off what's been a very impressive year for him. Uh, and has very much used this year as a way of propelling himself up the rankings and towards, but possibly not quite into, uh, the world's top ten. Um, however, it probably is only a matter of time before he gets to that point. Uh, we've got uh, Rob's matches on the screen, uh, so he had to go through uh, the round of 32, coming up against uh, Ben Yorston, 6-2, 6-5, 6-3, uh, in a somewhat interrupted match, uh, which began actually on the West Court uh, here at Queen's on uh, Monday, uh, because we had some court sweating going on on the East Court, so uh, there was a delay of uh, about an hour or so um, in between the first kind of few games on the West Court. We've got Nicky Howe down the receiving end at the moment in what I think might be the most garish trainers I think I've seen, but th that there's some stiff competition. Uh, nearly as bad as your ones. They're nearly as bad. They're nearly as bad as my ones, but if you want, uh, if you've got a strong pair of sunglasses uh, and you want to watch back over some very garish tr uh, trainer choices, uh, do check uh, Nick's match against Darren Long earlier in the week. It was bright pink versus bright green. Oh, beautiful. Um, it was a, uh, a terrifyingly bright combination. Um, which, I mean, casting the trainers to one side, uh, also uh, a, a, an incredibly difficult match, actually, for Nicky. Um, taking the first set, but then going behind against a very impressive Darren Long. Uh, before coming through uh, in five quite difficult sets. Now, talking about people who have had good years, uh, not only has Rob Shankman had a good year, but n but Nick Howell probably best best tournament best year he's had uh, overall. Finalist in the Australian Open early this year, uh, winner of the French Open not that long ago as well. So he will be very firmly eyeing up uh, a place in the latter stages of this competition. It's not a bad record of last matches played, is it? No, not at all. Um, uh, and actually, um, I think particularly that final match against Steve Vagona um, in Paris, I think a lot of people were expecting uh, uh, a very difficult and tight match. Um, and clearly, 6-5, six, 6-5, five, 6-1 six, five, six, uh, is indicative of... Sorry. Yeah, 6-5, six, 6-5, five, 6-1, six, five, six, indicative of a very tight match. Um, but Nicky clearly very pleased to get his first major win um, of, of the year. These guys have played um, a couple of times before uh, in the last uh, tw sort of 12 months or so. Um, all three set victories, uh, all set victories to, uh, to Nicky Howe. I'd be surprised if it's that straightforward today, actually. I think you've got two really informed players playing some great tennis, probably in the best, like you said, the best form of their careers so far. I think it's going to be an absolute humdinger. Two contrasting styles. You've got Nicky, who's going to be a big target hitter. Long chases, and you've got Rob, who likes in a very attractive floor game. So it'd be really interesting to watch. And looking at the looking at the world rankings uh, just before uh, we get things underway, actually this is a very important one for Nick Howe. Uh, if he makes it a good run through this event uh, and certainly does better than Ben Taylor Matthews he will overtake uh, rod number four uh, to finish off the end of the year Neil McKenzie officiating <laughs> uh, 
Well, there you go, straight away off the bat there, you've got two... <laughs> What I'd classify as big hits uh, by Nicky Hell there. Very, very fast off the bat. <coughs> He's not hanging around. I think Rob is the key for Rob here is just to kind of stay in there and keep trying to chip away, to be honest with you. He's going to have some big hits against him. He's just going <coughs> to. He's so good at that defensive block, he's just got to kind of wait for an error more than anything else. Oh, he's unlucky there, isn't it? Fantastic hit by Nicky. It'd be great to get some people on the chat. Where do you think this one's going to go, guys? Is it going to be three sets, five sets? What way do you think it's going to go? It'd be really interesting to hear your opinions. That's a great dig out by Nicky. It's fantastic serving by Rob. Two chases, switching ends. And do join us. In, do join us in the chat this afternoon. Do let us know where you are joining us from, and uh, and who you who you are supporting today. Uh, I think yeah, we we think this is going to be a uh, a really close, uh, really close tight match. Uh, really excited to look forward and looking forward to seeing what uh, what's going to unfold. So do let us know who uh, who you thinks going to get through uh, to the semi-finals. What do we think here? Railroad going up? That's a lovely shot by Rob. You can't give him that time off the back wall, can you? Shout out for Rob in the chat. Of course, the Real 10 winner this year, a great tournament at Middlesex. Real 10 S Club that's sort of gained more and more traction <coughs> over the last couple of years as a great warm-up for the British Open actually and Rob played superbly well on I think what he classified as his favourite court <coughs> very bouncy which will go to his style perfectly there's Neil the man of the hour found a, a peculiar angle there to play off the chase but done it to extract the error from Nick it'd be really interesting to see the um, contrast in chases in this game actually that's two two long chases there Nick that's very much Nicky's game is trying to get down to the server's end and he normally serves an absolute ripper of a railroad. Yeah, and we also know that uh, Nick is known for hitting the ball, hitting the ball hard, hitting the hitting the ball pretty straight as well. So um, while we might expect uh, a fair amount of, uh, of of cut shots into the corner, uh, we probably would expect a fair number of. Uh, straight forces that will uh, create some quite generous chases. Mm. Nicky just missing the grill there which gave Rob the opportunity to cut it into the corner. Oh, he's 
just missed. Oh. oh. He just missed the gallery there to win it and then Bando into the nick. I wish I could do that. <coughs> I mean, I wish we could all do that. <laughs> Wouldn't be much of a game if we could all do that. Well, true. Followed swiftly by number two. First game. One game Got another shout out by Max Truman. Fire up Shanks. Three. I see a pattern here. It's three, three in a row. He is on form today. I thought we were going to see number four then. Yeah, <laughs> someone, someone's, some, someone's seen the grill, <coughs> the the grill count that. Uh, uh, well, both both Robert and uh, Darren Long are sitting high above at the moment, and seeing a real chance to uh, get on top of that leaderboard. Oh, great play by Nicky there. He's definitely started this match in incredibly strong fashion. Slightly despondent look from uh, for Robert there on the change of ends. Yeah, we are we are only two games into this uh, into this match. There's a there's a long way to go, Mr. Shankman. It's a <laughs> it's a little smile there. Best than five was the chase. Best than six was where the ball landed. Game. Oh, come on. Two games to love receiving lead. <coughs> <coughs> Some more support for, for Robert there. From Ben. He's getting a lot of support so far. Very popular figure in the real tennis world. Lovely shot as well underneath the grill. Yeah, really, really caught Nicky, who really just pinned back in that uh, in that far corner. Wow, Ooh. what a pick up! And that caught the bottom bando. Oh, sorry, the the bottom right on the ledge. Bottom ledge of the dead on there, absolutely flew into the middle of the court. Yeah, it's gone a little bit too deep into the court there from. Robert. Rob's getting sucked into just hitting it a little bit too deep at the moment. I think with the power that Nicky's using, it's obviously you're getting that projection off the back wall, which is really hard to then control on the way back again. Some fantastic dancing moves oh, here on the action he's got replay. The moves. He's definitely got his definitely got his dancing shoes on there. Yeah. Probably avoided quite a serious injury, actually. <laughs> Yeah, it's clever tennis. Yeah, oh, fantastic play there by Robbery Smart Tennis. It 
Yeah, well, well won again. Bit of, bit of hesitation there, I think, from from Nicky on the uh, on the return there. Wasn't quite sure how that ball was going to react off the back wall. That's a great serve. A little bit high. It's a great shot by Nicky into the forehand hazard corner. Rob was a little bit despondent that he missed the, the dead on there. Good short chase there. So if you're joining us for... Ah, yeah, we will have a, a quick look again at the world ranking singles. So yeah, so not that many points between Nick and uh, Ben Taylor Matthews for world number four. Uh, we can expect that a, a good, a good uh, tournament from Nicky here, uh, and also dependent on the other quarterfinal we've got this afternoon, uh, we might we might see a slight change there for the world number four position for Miss Tournament. Great pick up. Super reactions from Nicky. That's a really good play by Nicky. He's it's a great pick up after the initial, it was a great serve by Rob, but those quick hands. <coughs> Just pulled it back to Jeeves. Big difference between 3-0 and 2-1. this game with good pickups with the galleries and target hitting. spin coming off those two side walls there for Nicky and uh, just completely and utterly missed, uh, missed missed his shots there coming straight off the throat of the uh, of the racket ah here's our, here's our rolling grill count for oh. the tournament so Rob Shankman now in the lead with 30 uh, 30 grills but uh, uh, Nicky's already added three uh, just in this match alone Oh. Game receiver. Fantastic volley there. One game to two. One game to two. It's a great read by Robert. First gallery, no stroke. up are dead on accounts for both players. I don't think it's going to stay 1-0 for very long. There's uh, a few more to come. I think there I think we're going to expect a fair number of targets in this match today. Uh 100%. Quick ball reload there by Neil. Keeping on top of things. So if you uh just joining us uh, for the first time this afternoon. Uh, you missed, uh, missed our first quarter final match, which um, unfortunately for Mathieu Salon was over in a little over an hour as uh, John Lumley was able to uh, sweep, sweep past uh, the Frenchman 
fairly easily in what oh. was a fairly routine. Great point there. That's six love, six one, six two victory. So we already have our first semi finalist uh, of the day. John playing very well in that quarter final. 15 14. Go. And what's, one what's that you were saying about <laughs> the dead on count there, Dan? <laughs> it's racking up. Get a few nice, nice action replays. <laughs> nice there. action replays. Absolutely brutal straight force from Nicky Howell there. When Nicky's in this sort of form, it is it, it's just brutal, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, and anybody anybody who watched any of his matches at the French Open will definitely uh, be aware of that. Oh, that's another fantastic two cut volley there. All. Two, two all. games all from two down. Not not a particularly tight serve from no. Ricky on that one. I think Robert really seeing the opportunity to uh, to cut that down deep and uh, get the win. It's such a strength of his as well that that cut volley from return of serve. Oh wow. Oh, that was a fantastic, <laughs> superb oh. from both players there. Wow. of those backhands really kicking kicking right towards Robert there mm. looking like having to pull out some really difficult defensive shots there there's a lovely step in volley that cracked into the corner nice length on that shot by Nicky good change up I think we were all expecting it to go towards the timbre and he just slid it into the corner Target withdrawal. We <laughs> had one for about two or three points. <coughs> it's actually this has set itself up as a very, very good game so far. It's a nice close up of the grill there. It might be, it might be a little bit worse for wear by the end of today. It might, it might very well be, but certainly um, an opportunity for us to give a shout out to one of our our big sponsors uh, who are. Uh, out in force today, Saracen and Partners. Uh, certainly uh, enjoying the hospitality that the Queen's Club have provided them today. Ooh, ooh. Body blow. Obviously completely accidental. Just better than last gallery there to win the chase. <coughs> 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 
Have you got some interesting stats on the uh, winner of the last point? Yeah, we're just just starting to head a little bit more in uh, Nicky's favour. Uh, last kind of few points or so. That's another big hit. Very, very big hit. He's really getting some pace on these balls today. He's not backing down from the challenge, Shanks. He's putting his bat in the way. He'd like this to be a grill, definitely. Yeah. A little bit high. going, Nicky kept picking those balls mm. up. Particularly a, a couple of there from, from Rob just getting lower and lower and lower but Nicky, Nicky with a response every time. <sighs> Not much you can do about that one Rob. Chase the line. Pretty, pretty close to the rafters up here. He was, he was lucky to keep that in play. I think that's as close as you could get it. Mm. 4015, one chase, the line. We did have a, we did have a, a ball fly mysteriously up into the rafters in our last match, uh, which I don't think we've yet been able to. I think Sam either, either identify or recover. I think uh. Sam and Ben are still looking for it. Yes. <laughs> uh. 40, 15, 7, easy, chase the line. Alright, chase the line. He's committed to the game. Oh, that's he's. a great shot by Rob. Finishing the loose ball. Fantastic shot. Cut into the backhand corner. But you, you, if you're looking at Nicky's positioning just during that rest, mm. we've also got some uh, chase lines going down the middle of the court. He was just not really moving any more than one or two paces either side of that centre line. So uh, Nicky clearly trying to. Uh, clearly trying to command a different play but Rob just getting the ball back but just not able to uh, to test Nicky in either of the corners yeah he's got a good chase to defend here though better than two <coughs> what's about to dead on four game <laughs> to receive a lead first set 4-2 Nick's just pulled a couple of games ahead again but as we've seen Rob can pull that back So we, we were talking, we were talking a little bit about uh, probably not really expecting that many chases uh, being particularly tight uh, <laughs> up against. Uh, up against the uh, you know, the, the dead on wall here, we've had just under about sort of 18, 19 chases set in this uh, in this match so far. Two of them have been five yards or better. Wow. Oh, 
That's a lovely volley. reaction on the uh, contact point there. Yeah. Just high above the green line there. Another one to the count. I mean, perhaps, we're, ta we're talking a lot about targets, but actually something that's been a bit missing from... Uh, something that's been missing from uh, Rob's play here uh, has been uh, some targets. He's, he's, only in, he's only got two... Two dead on? Two dead on. Well, two targets in total, really, mm. uh, in this match at the moment. Contrast that with, with Nicky's six. Uh, on the board, um, yeah, that's something that I'm sure Rob would love to have a few more chances to take on. Be interesting if it follows the same pattern as the first quarterfinal we had today, where the first set was quite sparse with targets, and the mm. second set just suddenly opened up. Yeah, John very much finding his dead-on range uh, in that second set in particular. Thirty Start to see uh, a great view of the members' bar. With uh, it's got some fantastic uh, sort of glass panels in sort of the middle floor on the on the court here, uh, and you can see a lot of a lot of members, a lot of spectators. Five, two, seven. It's a fantastic view from there. It's it's I think it's one of the only it's one of the best views, uh, probably of any tennis court. Although I, I will, I will, I will caveat that by uh, saying that some of the upper galleries at the Royal Tennis Court at Hampton Court oh yes. do come in the, are, are very, very nice as well. Especially when the marching bands playing. Especially, uh, especially when you get the marching bands playing. Admittedly, hasn't has only happened once in the court's 200-year history. But another girl. Uh, You've got a couple of courts with that lovely view actually above the um, servers. I know Cambridge have just redone their one, which is superb. They've got a lovely viewing area there as well. I well, Radley's very nice as well. Radley's it's lovely. It's got a nice kind of coffee bar kind of feel to it. You sit up there with a paper and they've got a nice coffee machine actually up, actually up there as well. Watching, uh, watching the tennis play. Come for the tennis, stay for the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, another grill. Yeah, Nick, Nick's starting to tag together a couple of grills here. You can see a couple of points away from the set. Lovely backhand volley there. Oh my goodness, Ooh. I mean, that's three in this game. Hey, so that, that backhand volley Nicky's got down to a T is just such a hard skill to pull off. Mm. It's, you know, the ball's going away from you, it's high, and you, that control into the backhand corner is, is a very, very hard skill to master. be interesting to hear other people's um, opinions in the chat in best views in real tennis, actually. That would be which has got the best court view. We're very lucky here with the commentary position. Mm -hmm. 
I've certainly heard lots of people uh, experiencing the new uh, club at Bordeaux, uh, particularly the upper gallery there. Oh, game of the first set, six uh, to two. There's a fantastic viewing opportunity there for a brand new uh, uh, for a brand new court. The we all the way round on that one. Is you that can go around two sides on it. Fantastic. Uh, and you, I think there's a nice pool table up there as well. Uh, not that you should be playing pool when you're watching tennis up there, in case a rogue ball should find its way up there. But um, yeah, let us know. Best views in real tennis. <coughs> we will skip over the fact that th that set concluded yeah. with a double fault. Yeah, well, no one wants to revisit that. Uh, I, I, I won't aggravate that any further. I might ask might check with Ben if he knows of any other double faults we've had in any of the games so far. Especially if it's game point as well, that'd be even more interesting. Pridmore. Pridmore. Ah. Uh, we had one in the Oliver Pridmore and John Lumley match um, earlier in the week. Oh, that's another dead on by Nicky. He's just, his range has just been superb from word go today. First game of the second set, one love. It's one love in the second set. He won't mind just missing the bottom of the grill there. Nicky was a long way away from taking on that return. Galleries. Straight down the line. It's gone high again. It's getting a bit loose this game. It's gone wide. Oh. It's a long First rest. Up. Paul Bolleman. Oh. Good to good to have you with us today, Paul. An no. absolute gent of the real tennis world. An absolute world, gent of the real tennis world, and also probably someone who's feeling a bit of grief that we keep talking about marching bands at Hampton Court. <laughs> uh, for for it was a match involving Paul uh, that went very much against him. <laughs> you don't see that very often, do you? Uh, we've I think we, we we've had a few of those earlier in the week. Uh, the ball would return back over, return back over the net. Um, I think it's very, very unique to, or certainly, certainly uh, unique to particular players. Nine winning openings to two, which is a really interesting stat, actually. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're still we're still prodding Paul uh, in yeah. the comments about the marching band. We will uh, we will move on that swiftly, and we'll come back to a comment about Melbourne in just a second. Won the chase. <coughs> Very clever play by Nicky there. Oh, oh. neither the behind the back volley. One game all. Could have been a trick shot for the highlights reel, or oh. not for the fact that it went straight up and straight out of court, straight into the windows. Could have been another hefty bill. Yeah, Paul's given a shout out to Melbourne actually, which um, yeah, I did see that that looks absolutely superb there as well. Oh, that's a lovely shot by Nick there. Yeah, that that ball from. From Robert just there, just f f kicking up and super high off the uh, off the dead on wall. 
really just giving Nicky a chance to just pick his spot and, and kill the ball. It's an unusual error for him on the volley there. He's been so good today with that. 40-30. Stroke called there by Neil. cross-court play there by both players. one chase second set tied at one all this seems like a good opportunity for both players look at the stats up on the screen again yeah that serves one statistic 30% to 58% that's uh, huge absolute, absolutely huge um, particularly you know, particularly given that both players are roughly, you know, roughly, roughly even on the serves on the serving opportunities. The chase length was very interesting as well, both hitting exactly the same, which I wasn't expecting. So Game. Two games to one, the single lead. One. Another comment uh, from, I'm guessing it's Zach. Newport would also be up there with the best viewing. The uh, yeah, that's you. You had that's an absolutely, yeah. that's an absolutely brilliant call. It's a great shout. Two, two fantastic shouts there. Oh, well done. Fifteen love. Those ones high off the um, ball can sometimes <coughs> come down tr in a tricky position, but um, Rob just watched that really well. just tuning in it's been a really really good game so far it's been a lot tighter than the scoreline suggests but Nick has just been hitting it was a, nearly a great catch by Neil there um, he's just been hitting target after target after target and really putting the pressure on Rob Very good defensive volleys from two very, very well hit shots there. Of course, says that was one of the worst experiences of his life with the marching band. Yeah, yeah I, well, I, I think, I think we sh we we uh, we need to cut Paul some <laughs> slack here. We definitely need to move on. Uh, we, we've, men we've mentioned that experience a number of times. <laughs> we've got some good viewing figures going on here. Let's not let's not start losing people because uh, because we we keep uh, we keep uh, trolling them with uh, with bad tennis experiences. <laughs> Putting a couple of couple of points together here to get up to uh, to get himself a game point. It's a 
great new comment there. I'm only in the channel to hear about the marching band. <laughs> oh. oh. Caught it too well. Although it was something that we were also talking about earlier in the week, so we, w we won't talk about this particular instance, but certainly any uh, real tennis distractions that you uh, that you may have experienced in your in your playing careers. We've obviously talked about marching bands. We have fire alarms quite a bit as well, mm. uh, or lights kind of randomly switching off. The more obscure, the better. Please do stick them in the chat. We'd love to hear your stories. Very smart play there by Nick. We had a, a great uh, anecdote earlier from Drew Lyons, uh, one of the markers and ex-pros here, about a uh, about uh, a British Open match uh, a good few years ago now uh, here at Queens, where uh, the catering uh, was used. Uh, with the uh, whether the area up here was used uh, to store uh, catering facilities uh, and bits and pieces of food and drink for the uh, bistro we've got downstairs and uh, someone coming into one of the cupboards up here to pick up two if I get this correctly, two jugs each containing two litres of cream uh, which then uh, as they were returning back down the corridor to, to go back downstairs uh, cracked and then spilt all the way down uh, spilt all the way down the wall above the dead on uh, Drew has explained they had to stop play for two hours while trying to clear four litres of cream off uh, off the dead on wall here that's the kind of bar that we're looking at uh, in terms of in terms of your stories do uh, do stick them in the chat. I'd also like to stress that Drew told that story a lot better than I did just now. I think you I think you told it very well. Chase. Two chases, juice. Two games to one, Nick leads. One set to love as well. Yep, Just there's the ball move. going down. Oh, yeah, it's a great call by Neil again. <coughs> Worse than last. And actually, a bit of a rare treat coming up a, a tight chase. Mm. Not had one of those for a while. Are we thinking Nicky's going to go dead on shot? Yeah, I think a straight force off this return serve is going to be quite likely. This needs to be a good serve. Going to play off the floor. Ooh, fantastic shot. And That's then the tries game, it. That's a fantastic four. floor shot by Nick. Third time, it's nearly hit. Oh, well played! It's the third time that that's come off the penthouse and it's nearly hit the roof. Missed it by millimeters. That's how much traction he's getting off it. Yeah, we've got quite a quite a low ceiling uh, here at Queens. We've got sort of rafters and down lighters. Um does mean that anything that's going through the rafters in the roof is, is out of court. Um, I've done it again. Yeah, it's very close again. Oh, I think that's the third time. <laughs> Rob getting frustrated with those shots. It's 
actually well read by Nick there, covering across. Um, just sinking down on the volley there. So obviously, Queen's is a two-court club, and I know, Giles, you've played both on a couple of occasions. Uh, what would you say the main difference is? Is there any main differences between the two courts? Are they pretty fair? So, so let's let's be clear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's let's clarify uh, and put some limitations on my knowledge and understanding of uh, of these two courts. So, I played on I played on the East Court. Uh, so, the one that's being played here. Uh, that was back in 2018 uh, as part of a, a handicap doubles tournament. Um, that was taking part at the same time. That's good. a fantastic shot from such a tight angle. Superb. Um, as part of the World Championship Challenge, um, oh, fantastic. handicap double tournament they're yeah. running alongside. found so uh, I think it's also worth bearing in mind at that point that I was uh, certainly played majority of my matches at, uh, at World Tennis Court at Hampton Court uh, and I actually found it played quite similarly to lovely shot super <laughs> shot absolutely killing the ball into that uh, into that service corner um, I felt it was pretty pretty similar actually to uh, how RTC played okay uh, I'd say the, en the only real kind of difference I felt um, and I say this as a 65 handicapper at the time, um, was uh, just basically just the bando. Uh, the bando here, I, I'd say, is probably a sort of standard size bando. Um, the one at RTC is gigantic. <laughs> it's pretty thick. It's a it's a chunky bando yeah. everywhere you go. It's uh, lovely shot by Nick there again. Uh, I'd I would describe it. Uh, I'd describe it uh, almost kind of as the, the bando RTC almost as kind of as thick as uh, kind of the outer court lines that you might be able to see on, on the cameras here. Oh, wow. it's, it's very, very thick. Uh, and then my experience on the West Court was <coughs> uh, it was a couple of years ago now. Um, uh, it was a, a match I managed to manage to get over over Christmas time, which was some doubles, and again, sort of played kind of pretty fairly, kind of quite evenly. Like the the, the court dimensions are, are pretty much identical between the two courts, and there's kind of nothing um, nothing stand really out nothing to stand out, I would say. Um, but I would say in terms of that kind of um, does it bounce or is it kind of quite skiddy? Uh, I would say it's much more on the kind of yeah, I guess if you play the places like sort of RTC or Petworth, uh, I would describe it in, in those kind of terms. Um, although I've often found that my my understanding of uh, whether uh, whether courts play well or badly uh, is often very very wrong, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and is often personal preference. Yeah. Yeah. Important chase to win there from Nick. Worse than worse than six we got coming up now. <sighs> we've got some more comments in the chat. Max uh, Max is asking Drew to talk about his Queen's Club cat story. <laughs> that sounds uh, very suspect. <laughs> if if there if there needs to be an age rating on that story, Max, do let us know because uh, we might try and find uh, Drew and get him to tell us. But it needs before, it we, before we put it on air. Yeah, it needs, yeah. To, it needs to be strictly PG uh, <laughs> if uh, if we're going to talk about that. It's gone down. Fantastic cut there by Shanks. Three games to two. It's a very tight second set. There's been some great tennis. Be 
interesting to see those average chase laid again. Um, Another dead on. Yeah, we've had we've had eight chases so far just into the last gallery alone. Wow. Um, Very, very little really kind of proving to be better than kind of anything better than two yards really. Oh, that's oh, just missed on that left of the grill there. Got a great comment by um, Zach down here about Lewis and Preston. Yep, yeah, you, you're spot on there. He hit it with such force that it was, it was glass under there and the breeze block still hasn't recovered underneath. That would have, oh yeah, I, I can't remember. That was during an important match, I think. I don't think he just did it during a lesson. I'm sure it was through a National League or, or something. Worse than second gallery. Oh, it's a that's very well played. Forty love hazard chase. Forty love hazard. Hazard worse than two. No, oh, no, not good enough. Not good enough. Hazard chase there was worse than. Worse than second, he's put it straight into hazard the line. It's a great pick up by Nick. Opportunity there. here for some galleries. Oh, great pick up again. Kind of loops that one into the dead on. Almost a bit of a scoop. Yeah, I think they kicked back into him unexpectedly. Three games. Three games <coughs> <coughs> I'm still just kind of reeling from the, the previous comment about uh, about about Lewis Williams. I have to admit, um, big fan of big fan of Lewis's work, but I find it difficult to believe that he would <laughs> uh, he would find he would ever hit a ball hard <laughs> enough to uh, uh, to to break uh, walls or glass or anything like that at all. I've always felt his tends to be quite a <laughs> softly, subtle, softly, softly gentle <laughs> approach. So that, that comment has, uh, has caught me out a little bit there. I think he nearly got done for criminal damage on that one, to be honest with you. <laughs> like I say, big fan of Lewis's work. Um, uh, if you're joining us, uh, if you're joining us today, Lewis, uh, please, uh, no, uh, uh, no offence intended at all. <laughs> I'm saying this because I would like to be invited back to Leamington one day. That's what I'm trying to get. <laughs> <at. laughs> Great pick out. with a bounce here. Yeah, it's very awkward bounce. Oh yeah, that was a very good end to a very, very good rest there. There were some great defensive plays by both players. Nicky somehow getting that out with purpose. Uh, also got comments in the chat from John. Loving the off-piece chat. Maybe a podcast double act to follow the British Open. I mean, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> that's 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 very risky. That's very risky behaviour. <laughs> I don't think we'd be able to. I don't think we'd be able to market that really well at all. It'd be niche, but good. It would be very niche. I, I don't know about good. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs>
Giles and Dan, real tennis fireside chats. <laughs> Alright, okay, maybe there is something in there. There might be something in there. Three games all. Second set. was open there for him. It's gone high again. It's just about in. Oh, it's a superb Game shot. Seven. Absolutely superb. 4-3. Four four three. Three. This, is, this is going all the way, this set. <laughs> Absolutely stand <laughs> liquid shot gold. Let's uh, ho hopefully Ben and Sam can f line that up on the uh, on the instant replay. I'd happily watch that all day long. <laughs> I know I don't think it would get boring if I watched it all day long. <laughs> it's turning into the battle that we expect it to be. Yeah. Rob very, much, Rob, Rob very much starting to get uh, a firm hold on this second set. Something he wasn't quite able to to do in the in in the first set. But um. well, that's that's a superb yeah. shot as well. Yep, that all came from uh, it's like too bubble, wasn't it? It was a yeah, great set. Too much of a force from Nicky onto the back penthouse. Really giving Robert plenty of chance to pick his spot. That's great defensive work. <coughs> Rob Fay-esque volley in there as well. Yeah, I was going to say one of the one of the thing. Well, I mean, there are going to be many things that we are going to be missing from uh, from Rob Fay's stepping back in the singles game. Uh, certainly, one of them is uh, his ability to climb up a tambour wall to enact a backhand volley. Uh, yes, very much something that. Uh, We've had a couple of attempts, a couple of attempts at uh, <laughs> during this tournament. Four three, Rob leads. Worse than three, better than six. Thirty fifteen in the lead. Quick reminder of our other matches coming up on our quarterfinal Thursday uh, here at the British Open. So after this, we will have the all-British tie of Bryn Sayers and Ben Taylor Matthews, two players who know their games, who know each other's games extremely well. Uh, I think will be an extremely tight match. Uh, will then be followed on uh, to conclude the day. It was a bit short. Oh. oh. Nicky can't quite believe that he's left that. Uh, he's questioning Neil's call there. He thinks it fell better than four. 
Well, Chase interesting to see the replay on that. Chase was yeah, Chase was worse than three. Worse than three. Cool Chase off. We're kind of sort of directly above uh, sort of that end of the. I'm not going to call it. That end of the court. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 and clearly, uh, you know, take take from it what you will about uh, two amateurs watching the ball from very high <laughs> up and not watching very far away. Uh, I thought chase off was probably about right. But I also wasn't exactly looking out for it deliberately. Oh, great reactions from Rob there as that comes off the uh, ledge of Hazard second. That's a lovely shot. Oh. It's got time. It's gone close it's to the wall. It's gone close to the wall. Great defensive work. That did well lose it. Well played. Fantastic rest. Super shots from both players there. Oh, Jane Taylor, welcome to the chat. Go Shanks. He's definitely, definitely found something in this set to uh, give himself a fighting chance of taking. Oh. The the second set. 40, 30. He's definitely going. And going well. Okay, he's better than four. 40, 30. 40, 30. Okay. Which way 40, 30? Uh, so it's Nikki who leads 40, 30. Jed Parsons, welcome, welcome, oh, welcome. A true, a true legend of the game. Class was broken by Lewis on the National League match against Queens. There you go. Tom Seymour Mead, Adam Dolman versus oh, Lewis Williams. Jed Parsons, machine. <laughs> I think that's a, s <laughs> that's a comment on his own play. Preston won 2 1, winning the doubles on court two. Good to get that 2 1 win in there, Jed. Well done. <laughs> It's a results-driven industry, Dan, you know that. Well, you know. Fortunately, I'm normally at the other end of it. Chris, who's the marker? It's uh, it's Neil McKenzie, who's, uh, who's, Queen's to who's British Open tournament ended pretty quickly on Sunday. <coughs> Not able to take advantage of his uh, home court advantage against Levi Gale, lost losing three, four, and five in straight sets. Yeah, Levi playing very well <coughs> in that game. Oh, that was, that was different. Shanks getting frustrated with himself on that one. Oh, well, yeah. Ball coming to him. At well, I didn't think Ball coming to him at a to fairly to awkward angle, and he basically kind of ushered it straight into second gallery. <coughs> oh, that's unlucky. It was a fantastic defensive volley. Just, just clipped the light. He's got in for Neil. A couple of close calls for him. <coughs> well, maybe Neil shouldn't stand there. <laughs> just, the <coughs> just the thought. Points one sixty to 48 in Nicky Howe's favour, which is a really interesting stat, actually. It shows how it's 12 points difference. But I think if you take away the... <coughs> oh. If you take away how one-sided I think the first set was, I yes. think you'll find that this is indicative of a, a set that's... Very much more at parity. Definitely. Advantage Shankman. I know we've been talking a little bit down about players who have had a good year. I think we also need to give more than honourable mention to Levi Gale and the thing is that again a fantastic 2023 absolutely superb one of the informed players of the year really not just uh, not just securing uh, securing the role uh, as head professional at Preston Hall uh, obviously as your 
your home court down but um, having some some really good results uh, in the ma in the in the majors I got through to uh, got through to the main draw in the Champions trophy early yep. this year at Hampton Court uh, he took Leon smart to five sets in one of the uh, one of the American tournaments earlier in the year as well uh, again another uh, another up-and-coming star of the game uh, again you kind of feel there's a, 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 a top 10 position waiting for him it's gone over the windows uh, on the main wall and doing so that's presented three set points it's suddenly turned Rochester. this set hasn't it it's suddenly that's an, another lovely force by Nick there yeah it's suddenly suddenly flipped a little bit it was really tight in the first sort of six games of this set and it's just with the last last 19 points Rob has won 13 of them and there we go the second set it's two sets to no, sorry one set to all Third set. I'm jumping ahead of myself you are you're getting too carried away <laughs> this is how exciting this game is Giles <laughs> looks like we're going to have a brief pause in play <laughs> A little look up to the commentary box there by uh, Rob. I think he's quite pleased with how that set went. No, you should be very pleased about how that set's gone. And here the stat. Oh, look! At, I mean, look at this for a difference. Nicky, how are you getting four yeah. targets on that? That's a, such a big difference. But also for somebody, you know, so for someone whose you know, whose game is targets. Yes. Getting limited down to only four getting limited down to four targets in a set um, you know that's 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 something that I think he'll be very disappointed with uh, in terms of how that set's gone um, but also also no you know he's he's not been he's not been down the, the service service end all that much correct yeah uh, very much at all off we go set number Here three Start to the third. <coughs> That's a lovely shot by Nick into the corner. Better than half a yard. Fantastic shot. Strike. O only just though. Only, only just. Just inside the green zone. Seems to be getting a lot of bounce off that hazard side mm. back wall actually today. Just high on the grill. Go for galleries. A little bit too low. He's rushing into that a little bit. I was going to say, it's a little bit of a rush shot by Nick there. I think he thought it was going to sit up a little bit more than that and it, it just died down on him a little bit. Oh, that's an absolutely fantastic cross-court shot there. F floor side wall into the corner it's the dream shot that is the that is the dream shot indeed Nick really no idea what uh, what to do how to react to that so we've, got, we've got a better than half a yard chase here 40-15 receiver leads if you're watching in the dead on firstly why are you watching us in the dead on but secondly stand back <laughs> we might have a new entrant to the half yard hall of fame and conversely the half yard hall of shame <laughs> we've all been there exactly <laughs> it's a great defense try fight. again oh two fantastic volleys oh, oh. 
Two great volleys by Nick there. Great defending. Oh, they were both in. Well, that's tight. It's a great get. That's fantastic. Take the chase. I think he was aiming for a point there quite I clearly. I think you're right. Judging by that frustration. with himself there like he said took it a little bit f too far behind him which just made the angle a little bit harder to get behind <coughs> advantage, advantage to Nick worse than second, worse than second gallery Hit the band oh, I'm well controlled by Nick. First game of the third set. One love. One love. Nick takes control of the first game of the third set. It's another dead on. I mean, we say that, but you know, don't forget we didn't have. No, didn't have masses of, of targets in the second set. Seven to five. Mm. A bit too much cut on that cut volley. tricky when you get that angle just off the main wall <coughs> and it cuts in behind you. Oh, Rob's done a superb job yeah. there. Ball flying well, spinning away from Rob. He's managed to place that softly into the grill. Very well controlled. did-ons in this game. Second gallery chase. opportunity to wipe his shoes. He's feeling a bit slippy out there. Get there in time. Oh, he did well to get anywhere up. near it, to be honest with you. It's a really good pick up by Nick into the corner. A little nod of the head there by Nick. Last 
Gallery. Hello. Grill shop. <coughs> Last cap. Eight grills next picked up. Phenomenal numbers. He's, he's eyeing up the top spot in that grill <laughs> competition. That grill competition. Which I don't think comes with any prize money, but uh, a lot of kudos. Definitely at stake. Definitely. Bragging rights. Lovely shot. Great backhand cross court. Hitting that timbre and coming out at a sharp angle. Well Red by Rob on both occasions. Oh, let's just say again. another grill. Nick was moving him from one side to the other. Rob was reading it really well and then just finishes it off with a fantastic grill shot. Here we go. Rob there is still go. in the lead with 34. He's, he's trying to get onto this today, isn't he? Yeah, he absolutely is. Levi's still holding up the bottom there with 15. Dead on. Rob with 27. Last gallery. Game. The, 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 the beat for the force and the energy that came off the ball as it as it come, came off the tape, completely catching Rob, complete, completely catching Rob out there. He's been a bit unlucky with a few of those today, yeah. actually, hasn't he? Timing, the timing's been very unfortunate. Okay, it's less than five. Clean strike there. Just high on the grill. Got into the corner. Great backhand. Oh, superb play by Rob. 15 love. Yeah, saw, saw Nicky was a little bit too deep into the court. Spider opportunity right at the back. 15 all. Big game. <coughs> it's a big game. Fantastic point. Well played, both players there. Nick with a fantastic leave. I was sure it was in the grill. It just hit the top of the penthouse and sat up nicely for him. It really put him on the um, front foot. I've never seen so much fruit on court. <laughs> Shows you the actual athlete that Rob is there with those bananas. <laughs> what's, what's your what's your what's your food of choice if you're if you're on court? <laughs> food of choice. That's that's a great question. I must say I'm partial to the banana on court as well. To be okay. honest with you. How about you? Uh, uh, RTC 
does a very good trade in four bar Kit Kats. Whoa, you know, now you're talking a different sort of confectionery there. Uh, and if you're, if it's definitely late at night, uh, or if you're, you haven't had your lunch or anything like that just yet, uh, one of those again. Oh. Uh, well, sorry, one, <laughs> one. I was going to say, don't go quickly. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, one bar, one, uh, one. What do you call it? A stick of Kit Kat? Stick, I don't know what yeah, you yeah. Would call it. Finger. Yeah, finger. Hey, finger. Thank you. One, uh, one finger of, uh, of a Kit Kat every game. Uh, you'll be motoring in no time at all. Gives you the kick you need. Thanks to our sponsors, that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> other other confectionaries are available. Actually, I, I, actually it's not the BBC. We can, no, so we, we can we can we can plug. We're, we're we rebels. We can do what we want. Plug yeah. plug who we like. Throw that out to the chat. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, uh, if anybody else has got any uh, uh, any go-to real tennis foods for a change event, I feel like there's going to be some really extravagant answers to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then do let us know. The bar has been set with a Kit Kat and a banana. <laughs> so Partial to an iron brew after. To pretty be low bar. <laughs> pretty low bar. <laughs> <laughs> We're both cheap dates on the tennis court. Both right. very cheap dates on the tennis court. Oh, well picked up. Oh, straight in. Such a good pick up by Nick there. It's just it's coming out, uh, coming into him at the same time out of the angle, and he's just pushed it just into yeah, that just grip. Guided it. Yeah, just guides it. Guides it very comfortably. Such a such a simple but effective shot. <laughs> oh, well played, oh, Rob. Superb. Fantastic. Rest. Fantastic shots from both players. Yeah. Cross court to cross court. Oliver, I fancy a bottle of Pepsi Max Cherry. Oh, niche. Must be quite. Must be quite. I, I was thinking about kind of you know sort of like fizzy drinks. If you're racing around an awful lot, that's gonna. Is that is that sensible? Well, I don't need anything. I don't need any help hindering my performance. <laughs> Sounds like it might be a hindrance for me. I'd feel like a Coke bottle. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's a metaphor in there, Dan, but I can't <laughs> quite, I can't quite work out what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's another superb pickup by Nick. Just pushed towards that grill area again. Yeah, I think it's very much the targets in this in this set that's really starting to put uh, uh, to 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 give Nick a bit of a bit of breathing space in this set, and, and arguably probably think the match as well. It's just changed that momentum again, hasn't mm. it? It's just it's gone from Nick being in control of those targets to Rob being in control of those targets in the second set. And the third set seems to have just flipped. <coughs> right there. Got a brief pause because it looks like. Change of clothes. Rob is having an outfit change. He's doing a bit of an Axel Rose. And um, changing up his outfit 40, 30, for the next song. A lot of shaking from the head there. Yeah, Rob. I was just about to say that there's a lot of shaking of the head, but I think Nick Nicky's just played really well in this third set. Receiver. One thing that I've noticed over Five the Knicks play over the last couple of years is he's keeping that elbow super tight to his waist. Mm. He was a lot more swingy before. He's really tightened that up and it's led to a lot less racket errors. Straight force. It's a great block. 
great, it's great defending from Rob there. Oh, <gasps> what a get! Yeah, no, well played. Great Slotted play. it nicely into the last gallery. It's a fantastic rest again. It's, it's a real exhibition of tennis today so far. again yeah any any uh, any ball going up onto that penthouse at the back Nick is just gonna find his spot in the dead on put the ball there as quickly as he could a uh, bit too early from Rob on that one a too, too quick a bit too quick too far in front of him <laughs> takes us to five love Takes us to five love, forty love. Set point. With last gallery to chase. Are we going to see this straight force again? Oh, oh now we're going to see fantastic a volley defending. Though. You can't beat a good defence. Yeah, fantastic back yeah. volley. Those sort of shots can get. Sort of underrated, but they're <laughs> so important. Right, last gallery. Here we go. Three set points. It's gone for a high one there. Bobble second serve. Do we yeah, think? We didn't see that many. We haven't seen that many high drops uh, oh, yeah. in this match. We saw quite a few in this first match. It actually worked for him very well. Six love. And the third set, six games Fantastic play love. by Nick in that third Server set. He was just dominating one. play. Oh yeah, going back to the serve, you showed me a really interesting statistic earlier with those high, the high serves. I think it was was it a hundred percent success rate? It's a hundred percent. It was a it was not not a huge number of uh, of high drops from uh, from Nick in his previous match. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's take a look at some of the statistics here for the third set, and I think. Whereas the second set felt very much like, uh, it felt very much like uh, Rob taking control of the, taking control of the, uh, of of the targets and, and taking control of of the game. Again, we're kind of flipping back very very swiftly to uh, Nick. Uh, I mean, ten points there uh, out of you know realistically twenty, twenty four, twenty five that he'd need to win the set, uh, all coming from uh, all coming from targets. So. That's uh, probably been the difference um, in this third set. Um, also, if we were able to get that stat back up on the screen again, uh, the we've had a, a couple of fantastic, better than half yard chases uh, in that set, which uh, which Rob wasn't able to do uh, anything about. So our average chase length there uh, of four and five, uh, which is very uh, very unorthodox to. Uh, uh, to, to usually what we might expect to see from, from Nick play. Looks like Nick's got uh, a bit of pen and paper uh, in his bit of the gallery. It looks like he's jotting down a couple of bits and pieces. Taking a, a short break uh, up here as well while, uh, uh, while we all get ourselves ready for uh, some more tennis this afternoon. So just to... Uh, just to review and, and uh, update you on where things got to today, uh, we had John Lumley uh, playing Mathieu Saint-Long first thing, uh, which ended up being a fairly comfortable victory for John in the end, uh, in a little over an hour, 6-love, uh, 6-1, 6-2. We've got, uh, we've got another, s at least one, uh, potentially two more sets this afternoon. Uh, between between these two chaps, and then later on we've got Princess against Ben Taylor Matthews uh, in our uh, sort of Battle of the Brits uh, uh, event uh, coming up at the resumption of this match, uh, and then following on in the evening by the two uh, you know, by uh, Camden Riviere and Steve Vagona uh, who will complete our uh, semi-final lineup. Winner of this match will play uh, either Cam uh, or Steve. Uh, 
um, in the uh, in the semi-finals. down just there <coughs> so let us know in the chat the big question here is is there is this going is there going to be one more set or is this going to go all the way to five sets yeah it'd be really interesting to know people's opinions so far Remembering that both of these players, uh, both players needed uh, at least four sets to get through their matches into the quarterfinals today. Uh, Nick Howe needing uh, all five sets to get past Darren Long. That was a fantastic match. A, a, a brilliant, brilliant match. Uh, some fantastic playing by Darren um, in particular, particularly those in the middle two sets. a really good um, question by Simon there pretty new to RT I'm watching I think the hardest hitter in the game what do you think Giles that's a that's a really that's a great debate to be fair he's definitely up there he's definitely up there um, I so I think I probably would have put Rob Fay uh, I think I'd probably say that Rob was a harder hitter of the ball Yep. Um, I'm trying to think of anybody who is... Lewis and Lewis. I mean, Lewis is up there as well, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Lewis, Lewis can... I mean, I've seen him in, in a couple of those exhibition matches yeah. at Leamington. And, oof. Crikey, I wouldn't want to be on the other end of that. Let's put it that way. 13, 15, receiver leads better than three. But yeah, keen to hear what other people think about that as well. I think Will Flynn. We've got we've got another suggestion from the oh. commentary box with Will Flynn. It's a great shout as well. It's another great shout as well. Very good hitter of the ball. His dad's no slouch as well. Simon, <laughs> if you're if you're watching, I've uh, uh, had the uh, I have to admit displeasure of having to deal with <laughs> some of the shots that you've played uh, on, on a tennis court sometimes and uh, they've definitely scared me quite a few times is he the hardest hitter you've played against you reckon oh I have played oh, still in court uh, I found myself playing against Robert Frost once oh yeah well uh, rough, <sighs> roughly 20 handicapper um I have to admit, uh, oh. oh, that's over the service line. Uh, without wanting to uh, uh, demean uh, this commentary, I feel like we've we've kept it kind of uh, <laughs> pretty pretty clean uh, up to this point. That was, I think, certainly my uh <laughs> my experiences of uh, as a 55 handicapper playing against Robert Frost as a sub 20. That was definitely a new. <laughs> A new trouser moment uh, <laughs> when I was playing him. Uh, Very well was, put. That was a terrifying, terrifying experience. Um, Ivan Ronaldson, it's not a bad shot. Ian, Ho ah, Ian, uh, great to have you with us today. Tim Chisholm, that's, that's a very, very good shot. That's a really good yeah. shot. Definitely a hard hitter of the ball. Actually, I'd, I'd also like to put Ian Hawkey up there as the hardest hitter of the ball. He, I think, I think Ian, uh, and great to. I, I've been a long time since we've caught up, but uh, great to see you joining us. Uh, you are pretty much the reason that I wear eye protection now. <laughs> 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 it's 
contact from the tears or <laughs> just just <laughs> just uh, I just kind of thought if I'm if I'm if I'm if my game is starting to head in the <laughs> direction where uh, I'm going to be coming up against uh, hard hitters of the ball, I'm gonna I'm gonna want to make sure my eyes are still in one piece at the end of the game. Rather good films. That's Daniel Cooper. Oh. Liquid, liquid banter, lads. <laughs> <laughs> We're good at something. <laughs> well, so you're yourself, Dan, and uh, and also Dan took down this year's King's Goblet title, which is no mean feat. At RTC. Volley in penthouse. Volley in penthouse. <laughs> Is that the name of the jazz band that you're going to set up? Yeah, yeah, jazz fusion. Jazz fusion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what we're fusing it with yet. Volume, uh, volume penthouse. Volume penthouse. Coming to a pub near you soon. <laughs> oh, great pick up by Rob. Oh, s superb tennis, well played. So close to a winning gallery there on the replay. Just, oh, I, don't, I don't think I've seen one come any closer than that, actually. I think that hit the shelf and span out. Yeah. It's unbelievable. <coughs> Rob's. Walking towards the surface end here. Be interesting to see what he serves up now. Nicky's dealt with those railroad <coughs> very well today. Stepping in and volleying pretty much anything that comes near him. Will Flynn hardest? Not close. <laughs> Game receiver. Not, one not, game even close, not even close. I think Nicky would come close, wouldn't he? He must be getting near that 160 mile an hour mark <laughs> we were talking about <laughs> earlier. Yeah, I think I think that 160. Uh, uh, Is that taking on a good day with I, perfect I, conditions? I think that's actually rackets. I don't think so. I think. You think? You think that's realers? <laughs> They've seen you play, Giles, and they've picked up a speed over there. Well, Flint, he knocks the racket out of my hand. <laughs> <or so. laughs> Maybe a grip issue. Oh. Yeah, I think that is a glowing endorsement, to be fair. It's for Will. Oh, actually, if I'm if I'm gonna if I'm gonna go back a couple of years, I might also put from Oxford to chap Bruce Morrison. Bruce Who's Morrison. gonna put him out there? Probably again, maybe not the hardest hitter in the whole sport, but certainly the hardest hitter I think I've experienced in in the game. Um, not seen Bruce for a good few years actually. I had the uh, had a semi-final in the Chetwood Trophy against him a good few years ago. And uh, it did not end well because <laughs> I just I just didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, that's a great pickup. Oh. I think the the hardest hitter I've come against is someone relatively recently, which was Oliver Darner at Middlesex. Mm -hmm. um, he can man, he can hit the ball. I tell you that. I think he did oh. hit. I think he did hit me. With it. It's gone That's straight, straight into the neck, down at the corner. so well <coughs> oh. 
40-30 still. Rob in the lead. Now we've got a new. Uh, oh, we're onto oh a, sorry. We're onto a new game. I did think that, and I then looked down and thought I've messed up. Here we go. Yeah. Oh. So I correct myself. Two one to Rob. Worse than five. Jane Taylor, hardest hitter I've ever played. Lewis Gordon when he gets bored coaching me. <laughs> I can't imagine anyone getting bored coaching you, Jane. Another grill. Feels like some very unorthodox coaching methods going on at Petworth. Deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. That kind of works. That kind of mentality, is it? Yeah, yeah. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> It's well oh watched, Rob. Yeah. Great play. 13, catching, uh, catching Nick again. Couple of occasions he's come forward, maybe a couple of hot, couple of strides too much. And yeah, well I think being able to find a bit of a gap back by the grill wall. I think he's looking to cut out that. Tamba shot moving across and he's just leaving that little gap behind him if Rob can find it like you said it just cuts in behind we've got a couple more answers here yeah, we've got the, hang on we've got we've got the replay here oh that's the, yep that's down yeah the, these replays are good aren't they they're superb they're very they're very very good let's come back to the comments Ruben I definitely hit harder than Vidana <laughs> <laughs> now the, the the thing is, is that I definitely hit harder than the time. <laughs> he does hit hard, to be fair. <sighs> Sealand's finest. The thing is, if if it rhymes, harder than Vadana, oh, it's a then it must be true, surely. It's got to be an RT tag, isn't it? An RTO tag there. <laughs> <laughs> surely it'd be harder than Vadana. Lewis Gordon surely in conversation with hardest hitter and Noah Moats. <laughs> good points, Chris, good points. Yep. Noah a beast, but the sound just different from Will and he doesn't even have to step into it. It's all natural. Last Lovely last gallery shot there by Rob. Rob just with the advantage in this <coughs> game. 2 1 up. 40 yeah. 30. Last gallery. Real chance to pull ahead from Nick here. Rob, even. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> 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 Looks like he's going for the railroad again here. Oh, just fell better than last. <coughs> it's a lovely, lovely backhand into that timbre. Just looked like he put a little bit of undercut on there. It just slid off and just took the pace right off it. Then I'll shot again by Nick. It's <coughs> more stick for Vadana. <laughs> I feel like he's not here to defend himself. Do we need to another BBC? <laughs> need, need a need a right of reply. <laughs> statement. <laughs> oh. It's just skipped off the top of the net again. 
got a replay coming up. Yep, that's the better than last. That's better than last, which playing off the last gallery chase. There's definitely some daylight there. There's a bit of bit of a gap between the two. Excellent marking there by Neil. Yep, he's he's done superbly today. Advantage, worse than four. Worse than four. Nick with the advantage here. Yeah, chance to chance to level this up. Mm. Kind of kind of bring the momentum back to himself a little bit. One. Won the chase, yeah. Juice. That one's one chase, we're back to juice. Superb shot by Nick there. Floor side wall into the Nick. There. I'm just getting lower and lower and lower as it's going over and that. <coughs> Rob knows it as well. Two each in the fourth. racking them up. It's a bit maybe a bit too casual on that return from Rob. I think it came onto him a bit slower than he was thinking. Mm. Not much power going on there. No, a really good change up by Nick actually. The way that, that serve oh, kicked that was, out. That was unbelievable. 13, well Simon, uh, thank you for your question in the chat. I hope uh, I hope you have got uh, a good flavour of uh, everybody's cool. opinions there. I particularly enjoy the fact that nobody supported me in my theory <laughs> that Rob Fay was the hardest hitter. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's an interesting one because that's, that's all right. That's okay. <laughs> you know, he definitely hit the ball hard. <laughs> Let's come off the bottom. Great running. To watch the ball. <laughs> I'm impressed that he got near it. To oh, be honest here's here's the replay on the better than four. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's looking that's looking like that's bounced just behind uh, Nicky, I think. So I think Definitely it is close. He's win the point, I think. Definitely close. <coughs> I think it's another good call by Neil there. Use of force there by Nick. Yeah. Change of speed there. Worse than first. We go about the same technique. Yes. Game. Three games to two. Three two. That's the. Uh, that was the fifth chase in this game that Nicky has set that was first gallery or wow. worse wow <coughs> well it's turning out to be a fantastic game oh it's unlucky it kind of feels like that that's, you know, 
Nicky's ability to just kind of pluck out a couple of targets. Yes. And really, just kind of out of absolutely nowhere, suddenly take you know, 30 love lead, 40 15 lead. Like that, that's, that's surely going to play on, well, not just you know, Rob, Rob in this instance, but all of his opponents. Just knowing that he could just pull those out of the bag really whenever he wants, just really take the pressure off him in, a, in that kind of situation. Uh, is re it's just it's just a remarkable feat to have. Yeah, 15, it's, it's just been so tight, hasn't it? Ah, you got someone backing you up. <sighs> yeah. Not a bad person to have backing no. you up either. Thank you, Lewis, for your thank you, Lewis, for your comment. Even though I absolutely <laughs> slammed your training methods a bit <laughs> earlier, you might not have heard that. You shouldn't have brought it up. Oh, possibly not. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually Jane, so it was, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, great, great you're joining us uh, today, Lewis. I hope you've recovered from your quarter past twelve oh, finish. What a match uh, that was earlier in the week. That's not hit the roof again. Oh, he's been so unlucky with those today, Rob. <laughs> it's enough to drive a guy crazy. Well, that is the sixth chase that's... Uh, <laughs> is it really? <laughs> That'll be the sixth chase that Nicky has set that was worse than first gallery. I, wonder, I don't know if that's number two or three that's bounced over the net. Yeah. It's absolutely unbelievable. It's great hitting. Slight break. Bob's just sorting himself out a little bit. Big match this, big game this one. Chase the line. Well won. Yeah. It's very clever tennis there. 30-40. <coughs> Four, two, or three, or one is on this on on the line here. Well played, Game Nikki. Server. Four games to two. Four, two, four sets. Four, two. It's got that two-game cushion. Let's just get a bit loose with those. Yeah, I think Nicky's now going to feel a lot more comfortable with that kind of two-game, two-game advantage mm. uh, in this set because it has been, it's been a super tight set. Uh, this one, yeah. Um, but like you were saying, four, the difference between four-two and, and three-all uh, at this stage in the match is oh, um, would have been an absolute world of a shot if that went in. Yeah. Uh, Zero respect from Mr. Shankman <laughs> at the far end. As expected from him. Straight force cross court. I just feel like he needs to push those ones down the line a bit. Mm. I think when you get this far behind sometimes in this deciding, or could be the deciding set, you end up trying a bit too hard sometimes. It's a lovely shot yeah. by Nick. Very, very calm and composed. Very nice footwork there, just yeah. giving himself giving himself the perfect amount of space to move the ball around him and straight into winning gallery. Nicky Howe has jumped up that leaderboard. Well, uh, well, quite quite rightly, we've got to remember that... Uh, so, firstly, that uh, all of these folks have all played two matches. Yep. Um, and this actually is only now Nicky's second match um, of the... Uh, of the event. Do you? How many did Darren hit in his well, first he round he match? Do you know how many? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I a lot. I would I would say it was. It might have got. A I mean, I w was watching it, watching that match at home, and I. Game receiver. Uh, and I, I think I, I'd initially predicted 
because I think he'd hit the grill four times in the first two games. Yes. And I was like, I think he might hit 20 grills in this <laughs> match. And I don't think I was that far out either. No, I don't. I think you must be close to that. Rob's got to win this game. So he's really <laughs> he's got to step up. Yeah, he's got well, if he loses the game, he's he got over. to win. <laughs> step it up. Come on. Well played. It's a lovely shot by Nick again. Definitely bringing the fight to Nicky Howell here. 30 love. 16 dead ons in this game alone. This match alone. It's a great pick up off the wall. Good force. The right time to do it. Love two chases, first one worse than six. How to serve grills percentage. Both Manchester boys at the top of that. from Rob Nick will want to finish this well played that's the way to finish it that brings up brings up match point better than two for a place in the semi-final oh, well played Nick fantastic that's the win what a great game of tennis We've been treated to an absolute feast there of fantastic tennis from the number five seed and the world number five and the world number 11. Uh, Nick Howell coming through that uh, in four sets. So he books a place in Saturday's semi-final match. Uh, and he'll be playing the winner of tonight's quarter-final, which is uh, Camden Riviere against Steve Vagona. Got a few of the match uh, statistics up here on the screen just to, to round out our coverage today. I mean, just look at those targets. That's 32 targets uh, in total. That's I mean, that's that's a set in itself, really, isn't it? I mean, that's just from uh, from from the fourth seed. What stats? Um, and Interesting with the point served there. Actually, mm. Rob serving more, but. Um, coming out on the other end yeah absolutely so thank you very much for uh, joining us this afternoon we're going to go straight into our next match uh, over on the next uh, live stream we should probably look at the camera actually while we're doing this bit. oh yes true we're yeah oh we're over there can you see him <laughs> over there? so we're gonna uh, we're gonna go straight into our next match so our third quarter final which was Bryn Sayers versus Ben Taylor Matthews uh, I've been Giles and he's been Dan and uh, come back soon uh, for Bryn versus Ben Great thank game. you Thank you.